special week. For one, we have Thanksgiving tomorrow, guys. And I know, like all you guys, it's going to be a great Thanksgiving. The next is my birthday. It's Saturday, man. So let's clap it up for my birthday, man. Let's clap it up for my birthday coming up on Saturday. Now, today, today is going to be a little bit different than normal. Uh, today, I wanted to get into a little more film study. You know, um, usually, you know, I have my guests. We come on, we talk. But today I wanted to kind of show a little bit of plays, mainly zone plays, you know, a little bit of outside zone, mid zone, inside zone. It's just talking about a little bit of that. I have um, some film from uh, the UCF days and uh, some great film, great uh, coaching clinic type film uh, that's going to help you guys today. But before we get started with that, I wanted to address uh, a question that is constantly asked um, to me. You know, it's asked in different ways, but it's pretty much the same uh, question. You know, I get it on my Instagram, I get it on my Twitter, and the question is, what makes a good offensive line? Or it's, what can I do to be a better offensive line? Or how can I be a better offensive lineman? Right, all different ways of asking the same question, right? So I go back and I think of some of the top offensive linemen that's playing right now. Let's just go into the NFL, right? You have top offensive linemen all throughout every league, every um, every league, whether it's high school, college, or pro, right? So let's stick with the pro. So you have guys like Trent Williams, you have guys like Trent Brown, Quentin Nelson, Zach Martin. All different players, right? Different positions, right? You have uh, both left side, right side, uh, tackle, guard, whatever the case may be. All good players. Um, but even though they're different players, they all have similar characteristics. And every offensive lineman have these characteristics if they want to be great. The great ones have these characteristics. So first, the first characteristic is, of course, intelligence, right? Are you a smart player? Can you get the concept down? Do you understand film? Do you understand what you're watching? Are you just watching film just to watch it? Or are you watching it, dissecting it, understanding it, asking questions, right? You can't just watch film like it's a movie um, on Friday night, right? You have to understand what you're watching, all right? The next one is understanding the playbook. Understand what your coach is trying to accomplish. You know, um, you know, I think back to a lot of the, the great players that I played with, you know, they didn't just understand what they were doing. They understood the big picture. They understood what the person next to them had to do because why it made their job a lot easier. The next is toughness. The next characteristic is toughness, right? So first we had intelligence. Now the next one is toughness. You have to be a tough player to play this position. This is a this is not a pretty boy position. This is not a look good position. This is a down and dirty trenches position. It's a doggy dog position. You have to be tough when you're in the trenches. You, when you put your hand down in that dirt, you have to understand that it's either me dominating this guy or this guy dominating me no matter if you're playing offensive line or defensive line. The trenches is definitely a tough position. And along with the toughness, you have to understand, you have to be mentally tough and physically tough. Mentally tough because you have to have short-term memory. So if it comes to a point where you jump off sides, cause a penalty, uh, give up a sack, you have to forget that play. That play is over with. There's nothing you can do about that play. You can't bring it back. You can't rewind. There's nothing else you can do about that play. Move on to the next. The good ones, the great players, they move on. The players that's average and, and constantly messing up, those guys dwell on the last play and continue to remember the last play, right? So you have to have short-term memory in that sense. Now, the next thing when it comes to mental toughness, right, is being able to understand that the coach is there to help you. 
He's going to scream. He's going to yell. He's going to do all those different things. But you cannot take it to heart. Um, I want to say it was Jared McCoy, the defensive tackle for the uh, – I think he plays for the Bucks now, if I'm not mistaken. I saw an interview where the, the reporter was saying, man, why was Coach yelling at you? Why was Coach doing this? And he made a, a, a great point. He said, to you guys on the outside, it looks like Coach is yelling and screaming and, and negative and doing all this stuff. But you have to hear what he's saying. You can't listen to the way he's saying it. Listen to what he's saying. So he's screaming, he's yelling, but he's also teaching while screaming and yelling. So you have to be able to have uh, uh, absorb what coach is screaming and yelling at you about, right? You have to understand that he's doing it because he's trying to teach you. He's trying to get you better. Now, when it comes to physical toughness, as an offensive lineman, right, and it goes back to the beginning, is always the motto of can I move this guy from point A to point B against his will? That's the that's the question you have to ask yourself. You have a guy that's in front of you that does not want to be moved, but you have to move him. So that's where that physical toughness come in into play. You know, you have to be a nasty player. Coaches. Coaches can't teach nastiness. They can inspire it, but they can't teach it. That has to be already in you. That has to be in you. That has to be already in your heart to want to dominate a guy in front of you. They can't coach it. They can't go out there and, and coach you to be nasty, but they can definitely inspire you to be nasty. They can motivate you to be nasty. But just being a nasty player, that has to be already in you. Now, the last thing, which is is – definitely one of the most important um, concepts for me is as a player, especially offensive line, because we're the protectors, or as a lineman, is knowing the difference between pain and injury. Right? You see a lot of guys, they sit out, they're relaxing, training room, whatever the case may be, for a little nick or a little knack. Now, you have to understand, pain, you can play through that. Injury, that's a point where you can definitely not play through it. You can't push through it. You might have to get surgery. You might be out for a few weeks. That's the difference. But if you're just sitting out for a little pain, then you really don't want it as bad as you can. My old college coach used to always say it. Never really understood it or never really paid too much attention to it until I started training and started inspiring guys is – you cannot make the club in the tub. So pretty much what he's saying is you cannot make the team if you're in the training room all the time. You know, you have to be able to understand that, for one, if I'm always in the training room and not practicing, that guy that's behind me, that's number two in the depth chart sitting there behind me, he's constantly working. He's constantly getting better. He's finding ways to get better. So while, while I'm relaxing in the in the cold tub or doing whatever I'm doing, getting treatment, missing practice, this guy is continuing to get that much better each day. He's just stacking the days, waiting on his opportunity. Now, what does that mean for you? Now, high school is a little bit different. High school, you can kind of get away with things. But moving on to college and moving on to the pros, that's not going to happen. This guy is continuing to get better. And now it's making you, it's making it harder for you to gain your job back. Because it's a it's a revolving door. We're gonna keep moving. You don't want to play, you don't want to get in, you hurt, okay. We're gonna find the guy that wants to get in and wants to play. Now, the last characteristic that good or great office alignment have is work ethic. Just work ethic. How bad do you want it? Are you willing to put in that extra work to get to where you want to get to? Does coach have to force you to work? Or are you one of those guys that is just in you? That's the way you was built. You have to build successful work ethic. You know, you have to be willing to do the extra things that's going to allow you to, to get to that next level.
and be successful. And guys, you can start now. It's simple. You can start now. There's no timetable on when you have to start. Start now. Build that. Build those characteristics, right? Build that work ethic. Continue to learn plays. Continue to 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 reach out to different coaches and ask questions. Continue to 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 find that mental toughness, that physical toughness that it takes to get to where you want to get to. And continue to build off of that. Stack the days. That's all you have to do. Stack the days. But I definitely wanted to to start off with that because. Those are questions that that's a question that I get just about every other day. So that now at this point now, there's no excuse about what it takes to be a good offensive lineman. Now for the fun part, for the fun part of things, now we're going to move forward into our film study. So right here, all right, for the first play, first play right here, right in your face, we're getting right into it. We have our uh, we have our zone play, so we're gonna start rolling the rolling the play right now. I'm ready. Joy, ready? There we go. All right, little technical difficulties. We're fine. All right. So if you if you if you go back a little bit, there we go. So right here, you see we have a mid zone play, right? So now, first off, what you have to understand is right. So first off, this is half line. This is a half line drill, right? So which means we're going from guard to tackle, right? We're going from backside guard to play side tackle, we're, right? We're running a mid side zone. So first off, right? You look at our front. The nose is playing to our front side. So what does that mean? Well, let me go back a little bit more. When you're when you're watching the run game, I like to tell my office alignment all the time is that you want to mirror the back. So your steps and the running back steps should be on the same angle. That right there is the beginning of a successful play. If we can mirror each other, our running back and our office alignment, Right now, here we have our mid, side, mid zone play. Our running back landmark is the butt of the of the guard of the play side guard. Right, so right now we already know he wants to get to that to the butt of the guard. So now, who does that put stress on a little bit more? That guard, right? In this sense, obviously he's uncovered, but in reality that's the guy who is going to have the most stress because we know that if we did have a guy that was over him, he will have to move this guy away from the point of where the running back is trying to get to. Right? So now you see that the officer tackle, right? That right tackle, right tackle does a great job, right? The right tackle does a great job uh, getting his foot in the ground. He does a great job keeping the, keeping a, a tight landmark, right? You see his hat is, is on that play side peck. Um, having a strong inside hand. Uh, he does a good job with a strong inside hand. This is crucial. We know He knows the landmark is inside of him. So what can he not allow? He cannot allow that defensive end to come back inside. So he does a good job with the strong inside hand. Now, on this one, I want to say the center gave a solo call, if I'm not mistaken. The, so, the, the, the center gave a solo call, so that's pretty much, he's pretty much letting the guard know that I have him. I have him under control. You can go help. Um, the tackle uh, and work your way up to that linebacker. Now, with our play side guard, right, with our right guard, what he does a good job is, I like to say you want to key the knee, right? So he does he does a good job with his footwork, getting on the angle of the running back. Notice his angle, know the, notice the running back angle. These guys are on the same angle. Now, he checks for the knee, right? He checks the end to make sure the end isn't slanting inside. Now, he see that the knee does not slant to him. Okay, that's fine. Now he works his way up to the linebacker. Now, what I would like a little bit more is tighter hands, right? Working his way up to the linebacker. I would definitely like tighter hands. Um, but overall, this is a definitely a, a, a great play. Good job by the center as well, right? Now, 
guys might be looking at it and saying, well, he didn't get the movement. That's fine. It's college football, right? It's pro football. You're not going to drive a guy 30 yards off the ball every single time. But what does he do that is a great job? You see his number. You see his numbers, right? He is square, and he has him covered up. We're fine with that. As a running back, as long as I can see my offensive line numbers and this guy is covered up, I don't see any defensive line color in the hole, I can win with that. We can make it work. That is the key. Cover guys up. Our co uh, uh, My coach used to always say that every single time. As long as we cover guys up, you don't have to worry about driving a guy 10, 15 yards because that's not realistic every single play. But what can be realistic is making sure that you're covering him up so now you're giving the running back a clear vision of where he want to go. So right now, and with this mid zone, he can hit it front side or he can hit, cut it back side. So right now, he sees that the center is washing the, washing the defense alignment where he wants to go, taking him where he wants to go. So what does he do? He cuts back. You have a home run and half line, uh, half line drill. Now, our next play, right? Our next play, uh, we're going to be talking a little bit about outside zone. All right, we're going to be talking about outside, outside zone. Now, the same thing is happening, all right? On this next play, we're going outside zone, but the same concept as far as offensive line, running backs have to be on the same angle. Right, have to be on the same angle. The only thing that changes with outside zone is now the landmark for the running back is the butt of the tight end. Right, we're running the butt of the tight end. Then you have some guys, some coaches that say, okay, outside leg of the tackle. Right, so it's whatever your preference is, your preference is. Um, but I'm I'm used to the concept of running the butt of the tight end. So right here, right, you have a the guard and the tackle, right? Guard and tackle right here. You're gonna see those, you're gonna see them running a what you would call a double. All right. So what is a double? A double is a double team. <laughs> it's it's self-explanatory, right? A double team between guard and tackle. So now we're working the outside zone. So what does that mean? That means that the guard and tackle are working the double team up to that backer over the top of them. Now what you have to understand is it's two for two. So no matter how these two play out, we have them. So let's say the defensive end slants across the tackle face, comes inside, and linebacker plays over the top. We have to work that out. Let's say the defensive end ends up uh, playing outside for contain, and linebacker shoots into that B guy. We have to play it out. It's two for two. So right here. You see uh, these guys, they have their double call, right? They have their double uh, call. Once again, good job by the tackle with his uh, landmark play side pet. Uh, not, uh, let me go back a little bit. When we're running outside zone, of course, yes, you want to reach a guy, but it's not to the point where you want to turn your butt in the hole and overreach it. You don't want to put stress on that guard. First off, you don't, you know, you know that you can get to where you want to get to as far as your landmark because you have help. So you don't have to get to the point where you're trying to overrun it so much that now you're putting stress on that guard and now you're forcing that guard to try to have to get on his horse to try to help you out. And now if something plays out where guys are slanting and moving and now everything looks like a disaster. So right here, you see the tackle does a good job with his uh, tight number landmark, um, his fist in the gut. Guard does a good job keying the knee. Guard does a good job keying the knee. Once again, you see all numbers, right? You see all numbers. So now these guys are fit in, right? These guys do a good job. They're fit in there. You see the linebacker is playing. They can the linebacker is keying the running back. So whatever the running back is doing, the linebacker is 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 being forced to, to have to make a decision. So now, if we play it, so he does, right here, you see the defensive end continues to stay with the tackle, plays uh plays locked on the tackle. The linebacker ends up hitting that B gap. So what happens? Two for two, we have to play it out. Like I said earlier, 
If he hits that B gap, guard has to understand, okay, I have to come off. You stay on the end, and we work our way up to him. Now, he does a good job with it. If he wants to play, if he wants to play back door, which means he he don't he doesn't hit it front side, right? He doesn't play over the top. He hits it downhill into that B gap, makes a got makes the job easier for our guard, right? And he does a good job coming off. Now, our center, our center does a good job with the reach. Obviously, he calls a solo, so our center feels comfortable reaching that that uh that nose, does a good job reaching this guy, fighting across his face getting his fist in the gut and now our our running back does a good job hitting it outside there we go good job that's a good job by the opposite line now moving on into a little bit of a little bit more of game film right you're going to see these guys versus the university of memphis right so right here is a little bit different right here you have an inside zone play all right, we have our inside zone uh, concept. Now, it's a little bit different because we're going against our Oki front, right? We're going against our Oki front. So with our Oki front, which means this is a three down front, right? Three guys um, covering the line of scrimmage, right? So you have the two tackles covered and you have the center covered. Now, when I say Oki, when I say Oki, that means you have an overhang guy. Usually the outside backer and sometimes you can have that in as well, but it's usually a stand-up guy, right? So you're going to have that stand-up guy that's over the right side in this case, right? So you have the three down guys, and then you have an overhang, all right, that Oki guy that's standing up over the top. Now, we're going inside zone. So with this, right, so with this, you'll see on this play, on the right side, these, call, these guys call an out call. Now, when you have an Oki front, even though it's a three down front, technically, when you have a a, a, a four-down front, or Oki front, most coaches, I know the coaches that I've, I've been around, we always want to try to turn it into a four-down front. So in this case right now, what we will do, we will call that stand-up guy a defensive end. The guy that's over the tackle, we'll treat him as a, just a normal D tackle, right? Then you have your nose that's over the center. And then you have your end that's on the back side, right? So we'll try to turn it into a four-down front if possible. So in this case, you can see that these guys turned it into a four-down front because on the right side, these guys call it out call, right? So now, with these guys calling the out call, um, with these guys calling the out call, it's just simple. Out, out, out. So right here, you'll see... Right guard, right tackle. They got these guys are going out to the D tackle and that stand up guy. Perfect. So now, what it does? So we can rewind it just a little bit. So two things could have happened right here, right? So these guys, these guys call it out call. Now for the center, and that backside guard, right? Now he knows if they're going out, I can call an A call. Not necessarily that I need it, but just so you can have my back, just in case I need it, right? So what it, what does that do for the center? The center could sell out now, right? Because he knows I have help on my backside, right? So now, if we rewind it, right? If we rewind it, now, I know I have an out on the front side. I have an A in the middle between my, my center and my backside guard. And now for my backside tackle, right, my left tackle, it's just a normal cutoff block, right? Because you have five for five in this case, right? The four, the three down guys with their hand in the dirt, right, over the two tackles in the center. I have my stand-up guy, which is that Oki front, and then I have that Mike Backer that's in the middle. So now we're, we're playing five for five. However it unfolds, we want to take care of these five guys that's in the box. Now. With this right guard, notice this is why this is why you have to play with a good base, be under control, good body control. Because notice the right guard, this guy, right that that tackle ends up slanting inside. You don't see you don't see the right guard panicking, overthinking, trying to make him stay outside. No, 
he takes him where he wants to go. Okay, you want to you want to go inside? That's fine. We'll take you inside. We'll run you inside and let the running back cut off of me, which he does a good job with that. All right, he does a very good job with that. And what ends up happening? We get five uh five to eight yards of pop right here. And if we can go back one more time, if we can go back one more time. Now, right here, you see the center, how everything unfold right between the center and the backside guard. Now, the center ends up working to the second level, right? You're not going to – it's not going to always be perfect. You're not going to just stand there and, and hope that the guy runs into you. No, this guy is trying to find the ball carrier. So what happens? The linebacker ends up thinking that the ball carrier is uh, cutting it uh, – it's staying front side, which was correct. So now he overplays the play. And what happens with the center? The center just takes him again where he wants to go. He doesn't panic. He doesn't overthink it. He takes him where he wants to go and allow the running back to make a play off of that. And now, once again, we get five to eight yards apart. There we go. Perfect. Perfect. Now, the next play, right, is a little bit different now. Now we're running our zone play from the gun, All right? So now – Blocking scheme, not really much change, but the angle changed a little bit for the uh, for the running back, right? But now we we got we have Akron here, and they're running that four one, all right, that four one box, and they're running that even front. So when I say even front, that means they're running two three techniques, right? The outside shade, their outside shade of the guard, right? They're even front. The center is uncovered, all right. So that's what that means when I say even front. Now, what do you expect when you see an even front? Expect games. Expect twists, right? That's what. That's the front where you're going to see a lot of games and twists, right, when they're running that three and that five. So expect that. So as you can see right here on the front side, which is the left side on this play, these guys are running the twist, right? So once again, once again, do not panic. Take these guys where they want to go, and allow, first off, before I begin that, let me back up. Look at the angle. So look at the angle that everyone is going in, right? So everyone is still on the same angle. Everyone is still on the same angle, right? Still taking the same angle. Now, back to the twist game. You do not want to panic. Wherever these guys want to go, take them where they want to go. Don't try to force it. Take them where they want to go and let the running back make them play, make a play off of it. It's that simple. Allow the running back to make a play off of it. These guys end up twisting. You see the left tackle end up putting his foot in the ground, coming back and just walling everything off. And now what does that do for the running back? He sees no contain outside. So now what? We're going to bounce it outside and ends up making a good play off of it. Young guys, that's what you have to understand. Don't try to force it. Just allow things to play out naturally, right? So if we can go back a little bit more. There we go. Good steps by everyone. Notice the tackle the tackle and the guard. Notice the right tackle or the left tackle and the left guard. These guys look the same. They These guys look the same. Look like they can be twins. All right, they guys look the same. So right now, once again, everything, do not allow the defense to dictate how you're going to block. If they end up twisting, it's fine. Left tackle does a good job walling everything off. Left guard does a great job uh, picking up the twist as well. Now you see the center. Center does a good job. Look at the angle of the center. He looks just like the running back. Right? If you screen, if you take a picture of it, these guys look exactly the same, right? They're both on the same angle uh, um, getting up to, to this linebacker. So if you play it, and now he does a good job, right? He does a good job. He does a good job getting up to that second level, right? Does a good job getting up to the second level and continuing to run this guy. 
Backside does a good job walling everything off. And it's a good play. Good things happen when we're on the same angle and everyone is on the same page. Good things happen. Now, now, with this play, all right, still, we have an inside zone, right? We still have our inside zone. And simply, I put this play on there, just real simple, not to, to really get into depth with everything, but I simply put this play on there because when you have five guys or six, including the tight end, right, when you have these five guys working together on the same page, great things happen. It's just, it's that simple. When all five guys are on the same page, understanding what, uh, understanding what each other is going to do, good things happen. So let's see. There we go. There we go. Right off the bat, right off the bat, if we can play it just a little bit, stop right there. Now, as you can see, everyone is fit into their double teams, right? We're running that inside zone again, We're running the inside zone. Everyone looks the same. I keep saying it over and over and over. If the running back and the offensive line are on the same angles, it's most likely going to be a good play. If we all look the same, it's probably going to be a good play. In this play right here, you can see all six guys' numbers. I'm talking tight end as well. You see from the tight end to the left tackle to the left guard to the center to the right guard to the right tackle. You see everyone's number. If we're fit in each other double team, as you can see on the right side, you can see these guys are fit. You can see on the left side, these guys are, these guys are fit in the, into the double team with their numbers facing the camera and covering guys up. It's going to be a good play. If I if I'm a just a guy that never seen this, never seen this film, just a normal coach. If I was to give this just to a normal offensive line coach and I show him this picture right here, and I ask him, what do you think happened on this play? I guarantee you he'll say it was a good play. Not necessarily how many yards you got, but it was it was a good play. So let's take a look. Once again, it's a good play. It's a good play. Look at the hole. Look at the hole. First off, you have the double team between the left guard and the left tackle, right? And let me, let me, matter of fact, let me, let me rewind just a little bit. And you're going to see it on another, another play later on. But look what happens. I hope there's a running back or a few running backs that's looking at this right now. Look at how pressing the line of scrimmage, turning your shoulders, keeping your shoulders square, what that does to the linebackers. It allows the linebacker, allows the linebacker to get sucked in to all the mess that's going on. You're bringing the linebacker closer to us as an offensive line. So by him pressing the line of scrimmage, pressing, 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 he actually brought the linebacker to the left guard. He brought it to him. He brought him to the left guard. Linebacker had no idea where the running back was. But all he saw was, okay, his ankle was coming downhill. So by the linebacker being sucked in, he was able to cut it off the left guard butt and make a big play. And now, rewind just a, just a little bit. Notice the tight end. Tight end does a good job cutting them off, all right, getting up to the second level. Right, getting up to the second level, cutting off that that uh that safety linebacker guy, right? End up cutting him off, getting up to the second level, did a good job with that, holding him off. 
good things happen when we're when we're all on the same page. Heck of a job. Heck of a job. Now, here we have um, our inside zone. This is uh, UCF versus Penn State, man. Went up there and 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 shut 110 got 110,000 fans up, right? Silent, silent the crowd. So right here, we have inside zone. First off, you have to understand that the running back has many different options, right? Hitting the front side or he can cut off the back side, right? He has two different options. Um, so once again, once again, once again, you see five guys, six including the tight end, working on the same page. The same exact page. Let's see. Once again, you see everyone's numbers. As a running back, I never played running back. But as a running back, if they can see your numbers, if they can see your numbers, it's going to be some, something good is going to happen because we're covering guys up. So right here, you see number eight, which is Storm Johnson, does a good job. He ends up still pressing the hole. He see that the left, he see that that B gap is, is looking very, very intriguing right now. Right. And so let's see. Let's see if he hits, if he if he stays front side or if he ends up cutting the back. There we go. It looked intriguing, but it was definitely something that he saw pre-snap. He saw this pre-snap because pre-snap read, that's a big B gap regardless. No one, no one is in the B gap. No one is in the B gap. So as the offensive line, all we have to do is make sure that we maintain what we have right now, which is a wide open B gap. Now, if we go back to the beginning, what I want these young guys to understand as well is notice the left guard, right? So right here, you can see that uh, the center and the left guard are doubling, right? Called the single, right? It's a double team between the center and the, and the play side guard. Now, notice the technique that the play side guard is using on this, right? It's called a gallop technique. Right, which means which is usually used in inside zone, right? With a guy that you're doubling to, which is that second level guy, he's either head up to inside of you. You want to use that gallop technique. So right here, just notice the left guard as he uses gallop technique. Boom, perfect. He's keeping his shoulders square keeping that inside inside leg high, bringing force through it, pounding the ground. And now it's easier for him to get off on that second level. Now he can ricochet himself off onto the second level. Center does a good job covering him up and understanding that he's going to be the one co coming off. So I have to get my hat to the play side. Same thing on the back side. These guys understand that I have to cover these guys up, guard. I might be working off, getting up to that backer that, that looks like it's flowing over the top. And tackle, I have to understand that I might be coming off as well. Now, it looks like they played it the opposite. Linebacker ends up backdooring, tackle end up coming off on it. But good job by that left guard selling that uh, second level guy for uh, to spring the running back. There we go. Good job, man. Silencing 110,000 guys, 110,000 fans. One of the greatest feelings ever. Now, for those that don't know about uh, Louisville defense back in 2013, they were some of the top, um, they was, they was, one of the top teams in every category, 
every single category you could you could think of uh, in the defensive side of uh, uh, statistics. Now, right here, we have our inside zone. Once again, with our inside zone, running back has to understand that he has a two-way goal. He can hit it front side or he can hit it back side, right? So here you see, once again, we have another team that's running that Oki front, right? That three-down guy with a stand-up guy that's on the edge. Um, and and to, to kind of go back to a little bit about Louisville defense, these guys, I, I don't even know exactly the amount, but these guys had multiple draft picks on this defense that year. So that right there just lets you know the type of defense uh, UCF was facing. Now, you see 91, who is that rush guy, right? That stand-up guy. And with this, you see that the tight end is going to be on the front side of the play, which allows the offensive line to keep everything inside. So if we go back, if you remember on that Memphis play when we had the Oki front, the right side called an out call, right? So now by us having the tight end front side, we don't have to worry about calling the out call. We keep everything inside, right? So now you see on the front side, they're going to have a double. Once again, the, the center, all right? He, he's solo. He feels he has everything under control. But now what's going to be uh, uh, next level, right? Next level type of technique is the left guard, right? Even though the center might have called solo, he's still there to protect him. But not only is the left guard there to protect him, the left guard is also there to protect the tackle as well, right? Because we're working up to two. So he knows he has this triangle. That's his triangle. That knows that in and number two, right? That that guy that's right over the goalpost. We know that's who we that's he knows that's his triangle. That's who he has to work with. So based on also based on where this linebacker is aligned, it determines, determines my technique and how I'm getting up to him and who I might even help. Right? So right here, you'll see this is next level type of technique that he uh that he shows right here. So right now, he's still taking his normal zone step, peeking to make sure the center is okay, right? Next, he checks, okay, center has everything under control. I still have to get up to my backer. He puts his foot in the ground. He sees the linebacker playing back door. He puts his foot in the ground because he sees color, right, over the tackle. He sees color because, once again, his triangle is that nose, that defensive end, and number two. So once he sees color, he puts a sideboard on for the tackle. Boom. Perfect. Now, what he also understands, reverting all the way back to the beginning of the show, intelligence, understanding the play, understanding what are we trying to accomplish. He understands on this. Okay, if number two plays back door, all the way backside, outside of the tackle, there's no need to chase him because he will not make the play unless, you know, he's just that good. And if he ends up making a play back door, that's fine. We can live with that. But what we can allow is penetration inside. So now he puts the sideboard on. Number two plays back door. He does a good job with that. Now. We're working the double team now. We're working the double team. Number two is out the picture now. We're not worrying about number two no more. So now we're working the double team between guard and tackle, and it's just natural. When you play next to somebody long enough and understand what they have to get done, it just becomes natural. We didn't call this. We didn't say this. Yes, we com communicating as we as we're going, but it just naturally happens. Now, Notice the safety coming into the picture, right? He now becomes what you would call that number two, right? That linebacker that we was working up to because now he becomes the next threat because number two is not a threat anymore. He now becomes the next threat. So 
He understands that. So what does he do? What does he do next? He works himself up to the safety, which is number 25 coming into the picture down at the bottom, right over the goalpost. So let's see. He gets off. He he take he gets off, right? He gets off. Take care of the uh, of the double team with the tackle. Next, all you need, all we need is a save the day block. That's all we need. A save the day block. Doesn't have to be perfect. You don't have to drive a guy. Just enough. Get a, 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 just enough of a piece of him to help the running back get into the end zone. And that's what he does on this play. Touchdown. Great job. Great play. Great play. Now, for our last play, right? For our last play. This is another play that I put on here. Not not necessarily talking about the offensive line. This is this is giving kudos to the running back because the running back does a great job making the offensive line look good. If you notice on this play, when you when the play starts rolling, you'll notice it doesn't look pretty. It doesn't look pretty, right? It doesn't look pretty for, for the whole offensive line, right? It's not a pretty play. But it's not going to always look pretty, guys, right? You see some some of these young guys, man, they're like, well, he did this or this happened or it didn't. It's not going to always be perfect. It's not – that's just natural. It's not going to be perfect. But what does the running back do? He presses. He presses. He presses. He presses. S Sucking. Look, look at look at the all the all of the red jerseys. He's forcing these guys to come up sooner than, than they want. They don't know if he's hitting the front side, back. They don't know. All they can see is that his shoulders are square and it looks like he's coming downhill at them. So they have no choice but to react off of instinct, which is I need to come downhill and meet him in the hole. So now he sucks them into the line of scrimmage and now he hits it outside. He bounces it, which is a good job. As an offensive line, all we need to do, look at the red jersey that's on the ground right now. All we need to do is cover guys up as an offensive line. And you think of some of the some of the top running backs, you know, that do these type of things. You know, you have Saquon Barkley, right? Even though he's hurt, you have Saquon Barkley, you have uh, Alvin uh, Kamara, you have uh, Christian McCaffrey, you have Mike Ingram, you have all these guys that does this at the highest level. So running back, it's important for you. You guys have to be on the same page with the line. It's not going to always be perfect, but you but you can make us look good as well. Just like how we open up the holes. You can save us sometimes and make us look good. So right here, you can see he does a heck of a job. Heck of a job bouncing it outside. And once again, good things happen. He get out there. He gets uh, uh, he gets that long run, right? That's a heck of a job by these guys. Man, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, man, I, I definitely – want everyone to understand the true concept of what it not only just about being a good offensive lineman but also what it takes to just be a good football player the three characteristics that i mentioned earlier right having a good work ethic right putting in the work constantly um toughness mentally and physically tough and also being intelligent understanding the play understanding why you're doing what you're doing just don't go out there just to play understand what's going on it'll make the game a lot easier i appreciate you guys for listening for tuning in today um happy thanksgiving to everyone hope you guys enjoy and have a blessed one Man, we'll be back next week, man. I appreciate you guys for tuning in.
See you guys next week, man.